Hey there, it's Professor S. I'm hanging out just outside the eukaryotic cell with the cilium because for the next five minutes or so I want to talk to you about cilia and flagella. But before I can actually get into the structure of this guy, we need to go back in time to something I did in another video. All right, so you should recognize the... I meant go back in time figuratively, not literally. Can we lose the black and white, please? Thank you. Sorry. So anyway, you should recognize this centriole. Centrioles were the microtubule organizing centers that were used to build centrosomes. And in the centrosome video, I also mentioned that centrioles can be used to build and form other MTOCs, like basal bodies. Basal bodies are effectively modified centrioles located near the plasma membrane that give rise to and serve as an anchor point for organelles called cilia and flagella, which are motile, M-O-T-I-L-E, meaning movable extensions from the cell. Uh, let's take this cross-section through the basal body slash centriole and look at a cross-section through a cilium or flagellum. Now, one of the first things I want you to notice is that they contain microtubules, but the arrangement is totally different. The structural organization of microtubules within a cilium or flagellum is called the axoneme. And you should notice that the axoneme here consists of two central individual microtubules and then nine pairs of microtubules circling, 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 that's not a word, encircling the two in the center. It's a nine plus two arrangement, nine pairs around the edge plus two in the middle. Now there's a number of other proteins that are serving organizational functions in this diagram, some of which I'm not going to label, but there are two other things in this figure I do want to point out. One is notice that the cilium or flagellum is contained within plasma membrane, we can see that. And then there are these certain little arm-like protein extensions from the pairs of microtubules called dynein. Dynein proteins are a motor protein. They produce movement. Let's go back to the surface of the cell and look at this from the outside. All right, so now we're back on the outside of the cell. We can see the fully formed cilium or flagellum. We can see the plasma membrane surrounding it. We can see the axoneme of the microtubules within it. We can see the basal body anchoring it. Now, I keep using the term cilium and flagellum as almost interchangeable. The reason for that is really simple. Structurally, they're basically the same thing. And when I say structurally, I mean composition of the axoneme, organization, and then internal movement. What separates cilia and flagella at the most gross level is number and size. Uh, let's start with size. Cilia are, relatively speaking, short. Flagella are much longer projections from the cell. And then in terms of number, flagella are usually very few in number, sometimes only one, sometimes three or four. Cilia, there's lots and always lots. And now there's some small differences in how the two structures move based on their length and how they impact the cell. So what I want to do is go to a completely different cartoon now and we'll take a look at ciliary and flagellar locomotion. Now in both cilia and flagella, what happens within the axoneme is essentially the same. The interaction between dynein arms and the microtubule doublets causes those doublets to move up and down in a way that sets up a back and forth movement of the cilium or the flagellum. Now in the case of the very numerous and very short cilia, the result is an oar-like back and forth movement that we see here. It creates a flow that's parallel to the surface of the cell. It's a flow that if this is a unicellular organism, propels the cell in the opposite direction of the flow, or if this cell is part of a multicellular tissue, moves the fluid out here in the same direction as the flow. Now in longer flagella, we don't get a back and forth movement of the entire appendage. What happens instead is the movement sets up a waveform, and that wave acts in a fashion analogous to a propeller. It creates a flow that's not parallel to the surface of the cell, but perpendicular to it. And again, if we're talking a unicellular organism, that flow produced by the flagellum propels the cell in the opposite direction. And in some organisms like sponges, many, many cells interconnected with flagella will instead create a flow through the organism, and that is cilia and flagella.
filming, were you? No. Because that could have looked bad. We weren't filming. So we're filming now? Yeah. We're ready? Okay. Yeah, we are. Okay. Hey, this is Professor S. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you found it helpful, here's a couple others you might also enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see all the new videos as I put them out. Thanks. You picked a good day to do that in one take. What?